In this video, we're going to be going over how to perform a discounted cash flow model step by step. Simply put, a discounted cash flow is a valuation method used to estimate the value of an investment based on its expected future free cash flows. This is a very popular investment method used by many analysts and even famous investors such as Warren Buffett. A discounted cash flow analysis attempts to figure out the value of an investment today based on projections of how much money it will generate in the future. And as you can see here, I've already built out a template for us to use. And there's a couple of different elements. Um, to this template, we can see right here, we're going to look at historical data. Here, we're going to project future data, and then we're going to make some calculations here to find the intrinsic value. And again, I'm going to be taking you step by step on how to perform this valuation method. So if you want to recreate what I've built out here, go ahead and pause the video and create this in either Excel or Google Sheets. But once you're ready, go ahead and play the video and we'll move forward. And so in order to perform a discounted cash flow analysis, again, we need to project the future free cash flow for the company. So in order to do that, there's a couple of different things we need to look at to make a growth rate projection. And the first thing that you always want to look at is the historical free cash flow for a company. So in this scenario, you can see we're going to be looking at Apple stock. We want to look at the historical data for Apple's free cash flow. And there's a couple of different places that you can look this up. You can find it in places like Yahoo Finance, Seeking Alpha. But in this example, we're going to be jumping over to a website called Mac macro trends right here as you can see and I pulled up Apple's free cash flow if we scroll down here to right here we can see their annual free cash flow over the past few years now depending on how mature the company is you might want to take you know eight to ten years of data or if it's a younger company with higher growth rate projections sometimes you can only take two or three years but let's go ahead and just take three years of data for this example um, for Apple, I'd probably take more typically, but just to keep things moving, we'll take three years. So we can see in 2021, their free cash flow listed right here. So we're going to jump back over to our spreadsheet and plug that in. And it was 92953, I believe. So we'll jump back over. We'll plug this one in, 73365. And then we will come over here and plug in one more year of data for 2019, 58896. And so essentially what we want to do now that we have some years of data, say we had all this data, we want to be able to see year over year growth rates for Apple so we can see where they started and where they're ending and how fast they're growing. So now we need to apply a simple growth rate formula. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here to under this year right here. We're going to type out an equal sign. So in order to perform this growth rate, what we're going to do is we're going to open parentheses, take this data here. We're going to subtract it from this data here and we'll close this off. We then want to divide by this cell right here. So you can see the formula I've used right here. So essentially we're taking 2021 data, subtracting out 2022, and then dividing that by 2022 again and enter. And then you can see right here, we now have our year over year free cash flow growth rate for Apple from 2020 to 2021. And because we used a formula, we can just drag this over and so now we can see over the past few years, they've had an average growth rate around 25%. So imagine we have all of this data here figured out. We want to be able to see what the average growth rates are. So what you can do is we can come right here. We'll type out average. And what we will do is we'll put equals average and open this parentheses here. And you can highlight all of your data right here. And this will allow you to see the average growth rates year over year. So we can see out of the data, we have a 25.63% average growth rate. So now we're ready to make our growth rate projection. And there's a couple of different things you want to look at. Again, we just pulled that data for a reason. This is a very important role in how much to project your future growth rate. They obviously have grown at a very fast rate over the past few years, but you also want to look at things like industry expectations and analyst expectations. So let's say after I do my own research and and seeing the high growth rate over the past few years, I think a growth rate for Apple of about 15% is accurate. And there's a lot of places you can look at analyst growth rates like Yahoo Finance and Seeking Alpha once again. So I suggest you use resources like that. But now that we have our growth rate projections, what we're ready to do is to calculate the future free cash flow for Apple. And this is how we'll do that. So what we're going to do is type out an equal sign right here. And we're going to come up here and select our most recent year of free cash flow. And then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that by our growth rate projection. So we'll open parentheses and do one plus our growth rate projection right here. And we will click on it to close off the parentheses and hit enter. And what we've done is we have predicted the next year of future free cash flow for Apple. And we want to do that through the year 2030. So we'll come here, basically do the same thing. We'll select our data right here. We will multiply it, open the parentheses and do one plus our growth rate projection. Close the parentheses off and hit enter. 
And now we have our 2023 free cash flow growth rate projection. And what we can do is if we come up here and anchor that growth rate formula down with our dollar signs so that it continues to select it, we can drag this formula all the way over to the year 2030. And so we can see here, now we've projected our future free cash flow out about 10 years out in advance. So the next thing we need to do is find our terminal value. Okay, so what is our terminal value? Well, as you can see, we stopped projecting our future free cash flow up into the point of 2030. So the terminal value is gonna be the sum of all the future free cash flows past the year 2030. So that means for the entire lifespan of the business, basically. So what we need to do in order to do this is we need a couple of different things. We're gonna need a perpetual growth rate and a discount rate. Now, perpetual growth rate is typically gonna be about the rate that the economy grows at, and that can obviously fluctuate over time. Um, it's a little bit higher right now, but typically it's gonna sit around 2.5%. And since we're projecting this out for the lifespan of the company, we wanna do what's gonna be typical, and 2.5% is gonna be pretty average. So I typically go with 2.5%, but do what you feel comfortable with there. So, and now we need a discount rate, and I have videos on how to calculate the discount rate on my channel. I'll leave a, I'll leave a link to one in the description, but typically a company's discount rate is gonna be seven, eight, or 9%. So in this scenario, let's just say that Apple's discount rate is 8%. Again, I'll leave a link in the description down below on how to calculate discount rate. But now we have our perpetual growth rate and our discount rate, so we can calculate the terminal value for Apple right here. So what we're gonna do is again, we're gonna do equal sign, and now we're gonna take cell J14 right here, and we are gonna do the multiplication symbol and open a parentheses and do one plus K18, which if we come right here, you can see is gonna be our perpetual growth rate. We'll then close off this parentheses, and then we're gonna divide by open parentheses, and we'll take our discount rate minus our perpetual growth rate. So here is our formula right there for terminal value. I'll leave that in the description as well if you need to see it a little bit more clearly, but then I'll hit enter. And so you can see we now have calculated the terminal value. And so now we have already have all the future free cash flows for the company projected out, but there's another really important step we need to make before moving forward. And we need to know what the present value of those future free cash flows are. So now we need to apply that formula. And to do that, we're gonna do an equal sign right here. And we are gonna select the free cash flow right above right here. So the 2022 free cash flow. And then we're gonna divide open parentheses and we'll take one plus K19. So again, we're gonna come over here and select our discount rate. We will close this off and then we wanna raise this to the first power. And the reason why is, let me go ahead and show you why. Let's see if I can find this. Yes, we'll raise it. And this is why I have these numbers listed right here because that is the power we're gonna raise it to. So we can see our formula listed right here. And I wanna be able to drag this formula over. So again, I'm gonna anchor that growth rate down by putting dollar signs in front and hit enter. So now we found the present value of this future free cash flow, and we've created a formula that we can drag all the way over. And so now we have the present value of all of our future free cash flow. So let's say if we looked at the year 2030, we can see it selecting the free cash flow for future free cash flow for 2030, and it's raising it to the power of ninth since it's nine years in the future. So now we have all of our present value future free cash flow. So our next step is we wanna take the sum of all of those future free cash flows. So we'll do a simple formula here, of equal sum, open our parentheses, and we will highlight all of our future free cash flows right here and hit enter. So that's a very important step. Now what we need to do is we wanna add the company's cash and cash equivalents and subtract out their total debt. Again, there's different places you can find this data for this example. I'm just gonna jump over to Yahoo Finance now. What you have to keep in mind is there's three major income statements. We have the balance sheet, we have the statement of cash flows, and an income statement. That data that we're looking for is gonna be found on the balance sheet. So what we're gonna do is we'll come over here and click on financials right here. And once this page loads in, it's gonna let you select your um, statement and we can see income statement is currently selected. We're gonna come here and click on balance sheet. And so once this is loaded in, we'll scroll down and cash and cash equivalents is an asset. So if we come here and click on total assets, this drop down, we'll click on current assets and we can see right here, we have Apple's cash and cash equivalent selected. It's listed right here. So 62639, we will jump back over to our spreadsheet and we will plug that in right here. 62639 and hit enter. And now we wanna know the total debt for the company. So again, let's jump back over to Yahoo Finance. This will be near the bottom of the balance sheet and we can see it listed right here, the total debt for Apple, 124719. 
So one, two, four, seven, one, nine, and hit enter. So now we have all of that data and we're ready to calculate the equity value. And all this is, is it's gonna be um, our future free cash flow that we have listed right here. And we're gonna add our cash and cash equivalents and subtract out our total debt. So we can do a simple formula to do that. We'll add this together and then subtract out our total debt and hit enter. And now we have the equity value for Apple and we have one more step to go and that is to find the shares outstanding and I'll show you what we'll do with that in a second. But again, you can find this in different places. I'll show you where to go on Yahoo Finance to find it since it's a free source. But basically you can come over here and click on statistics once you have the stock pulled up and we will scroll down here just a little bit and you can see right here we have the number of shares outstanding listed at about 16 billion for Apple. So we'll come over here and we will list that number. 16070, let me go ahead and fix that error. 16070, enter. Now we have all the data that we need to calculate our discounted cash flow price per share. And all this is gonna be is we're gonna do an equal sign. We'll take our equity value and then we just have to divide by the number of shares outstanding. And when I hit enter here, we can see I come to a discounted cash flow price per share of about $244. Now, um, I'm using example data for growth rates here. I didn't actually do research, so this might not be the actual intrinsic value of Apple. Always do your own research. This is just an example. But there you go. That is how you perform a step-by-step -step discounted cash flow analysis. This is one of the most important things that you can do to value a company. We see all the time people just make investments based off the fact that a company may have dropped a lot in share price, but they don't look at the intrinsic value of a company. This is by far the best way to make value investments that will perform very well in the long term. We've seen people like like Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, ben, Benjamin Graham, Peter Lynch, perform these type of valuation models to decide what a company is actually worth. So if you haven't been doing this, this is a really great skill to learn. You'll get better as it as you go on. This is the exact same type of valuation that I perform in many of my videos to calculate intrinsic value for companies. So if you enjoyed the video and you like learning about valuation and investing in stocks, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I have lots of tools on my Patreon page that will help you learn how to make value dividend investments and show you how to use a discounted cash flow model. So that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll try to get back with you. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.